morning, everybody. It's nice to see everybody. And can ev I'm loud by nature, but can everybody hear me? Because I'm told not excellent. I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine yourself at a donor meeting. You're sitting there at a restaurant. You have a potential donor across the room from you. You're feeling confident. You're feeling calm. You've prepared. You've done your research. You're ready to go. You're listening intently to this professional, this donor, and you are just hanging on every word that she has to say. All of a sudden, she looks at you and she says, how much should I write the check for? And you smile, sit back in your chair, and you say, $10,000. She goes, great. Writes out the check, slides it across the table. You sit back in your chair and you think, wow, I cannot wait to tell them back at the office. That's an image that you all can do. Whether you do it now or not, you can make more money and ask for funds easier if you understand the psychology of fundraising, which really is the psychology of money. So over the next couple of minutes, what I'm going to do is take you through the simplest model that's going to help you all be able to do this. It's called the ABCs of fundraising. This is going to be interesting because I didn't touch that and it moved. <laughs> so we'll see how my timing is, kids. I don't know if that could be changed. We're just going to run with it. Okay. So the ABC of fundraising is ask for money, right? You have to ask for money in order to fundraise. You have to believe in yourself and your cause. And you have to create opportunities for people to give you money. Those three things are very, very important. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to uh, raise funds in this environment. So with the ask, the ask is about asking for money, obviously. And a lot of people in nonprofit have trouble asking for money. And we're going to talk a little bit as to why that is. But it's obvious that if you don't get comfortable asking for money, it's going to be really hard to fundraise. So what I want you to think about is why is it hard to ask for money, especially in a nonprofit environment? Why do you think that's so tricky? Because typically, this is how the scenario would go, right? Imagine yourself at a table with a bunch of donors. And you're sitting there. And you can't pay attention at all because your head's going, doo -doo -doo -doo. oh my god, I can't ask for money. I was going to ask for 10000 but that seems rude. That seems greedy. Oh, I don't think I can do that. Oh, maybe I'll ask for five. Maybe I'll ask for one. Oh, maybe I won't ask. Maybe next time. Maybe next time I'll ask. And then all of a sudden, that potential donor gets up from the table, walks away, thanks you for lunch, no check, and you sit back in your chair and go, oh, they're going to kill me at the office, right? That scenario might be more familiar. And what ends up happening is three things, in my opinion. One is that talking about money in our society is kind of taboo, right? That it's very hard to ask people, hey, what do you make for a living? You know, you'd be seen as rude. How many of you talk with your friends about how much debt you're in? or know, really know, what your parents or your siblings' financial situation is. In this society, we don't talk about money very much. It's easier to talk about sex, drugs, and rock and roll than it is to talk about money. So that's a first key feature. The second thing that happens has to do with the world in which you live. And by the way, I've lived in the nonprofit world on and off for 15 years, so I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I've lived it. But the nonprofit world is a culture where you are held in greater esteem if you make less and you suffer more, right? The, the, what it's called is the nobility of poverty. And so people who are poor and struggling are up here. Those who are wealthy, uh, you, you know. There, so this, this dichotomy is a problem because when you go to ask wealthy donors for money or if you're going to ask for resources for your organization and you feel that there's something about being poor and struggling uh, that is valuable, it makes it hard. And so our culture, the nonprofit culture, I think, is addicted to suffering. That may be controversial, but I do want to put it out there that there's something to that. You don't have to suffer. You can raise funds and make profit in a nonprofit. And the last piece has to do with you as individuals, each one of you, that everybody in this room has a money personality. And a money personality basically is made up of how do you think and how do you feel about money? What are the thoughts and beliefs that you have? They're called money scripts. What are those thoughts and beliefs, and how do they either serve you or get in the way? And there's no bad or good money personalities. There's just different ones. 
So in the nonprofit sector with the clients that I've worked with, a lot of the money beliefs that get in the way of fundraising are things such as money is unimportant. Okay, well if money is unimportant, it's really hard to ask for money. Instead of thinking money is a tool that allows me to do valuable work, it would become easier to ask for money. It's not nice or necessary to talk about money. How many were raised in that environment? You guys were allowed to talk about money? Maybe I'm in the wrong room. Okay. <laughs> And my favorite, my all-time favorite, is if you are a good person, the universe will provide. I don't know about you, but I'm a good person and the universe is not always providing. So it's really looking at the different thoughts and beliefs that we have and figuring out which ones help us ask for money for our cause and which ones get in the way. Let go of the ones that get in the way. Because when you do that type of internal work around money psychology, what will end up happening is you will be able to have more ease and grace in talking about money. You'll feel more confident, less nervous, less anxious. And lo and behold, people will start writing you checks for $10,000. So it's important to, to really think through the ask. The second part is believe, and it has to do with believing in yourself and your cause. Because if you don't believe in yourself and your cause, guess what? It gets hard to ask for money. I'll give you a perfect example. The other day, I was on a conference call. And let me back up. I was asked about six months ago to be on this auction committee. I joined an organization. I really, really believe in it being as a professional training ground for me, and I'm really enjoying it. And of course, the minute you join an organization, they ask you to do something. So I say, Kathleen, you would be excellent at being the auction chair. And I think to myself, no, I wouldn't. And part of the reason I knew I wouldn't be very good at this is I didn't really understand the cause. Like, I understand it's a professional organization, but we run this auction. I don't understand where the money goes, why we're raising funds. I have no idea. So I graciously said, thanks, but I really think somebody else might be better for the job. So you flash forward to last Tuesday. I'm on an auction committee call. Yup, in nonprofit, saying no means yes. <laughs> Right? You say no to being the chair and you end up on the committee. I don't know how that works, but that is a nonprofit thing. So I'm on the call and I'm listening in and I'm still thinking, I don't get it. I don't get why we're raising funds. So needless to say, I'm having a heck of a time asking people to donate to this particular cause that it just isn't in line with my values. There's other things, and I'm sure you guys run great organizations, that might pull at my heartstrings a little bit more. So if there is a conflict between the cause and you and your own values, that's going to be a problem. But let's assume that all of you are much smarter than me, and you don't end up in these situations where there's that conflict. So, so it comes down to believing in yourself. How many people in the room are a founder of an organization? Are there any founders in the room? OK, Jane, you're a founder. And your organization is what? The one I founded originally, Neighborhood Housing Services. Okay, so when you are the founder of an organization such as that, what happens when somebody says, you know what, I can't contribute? What's that like? And, you know, I don't know if it was like this for you, Jane, but a lot of the folks that I've worked with, what ends up happening is when you're the founder, your identity and the identity of your nonprofit entity get intertwined. It isn't a bad thing, it just happens. So when somebody says, no, I can't give money to you, it feels, mm, it hurts, it feels a little personal, even though it's business. So now this slide is going to make sense. Because one of the tools that I encourage you to do, whether you are a founder or whether you take somebody who has said, says no in fundraising personally, what I want you to do is you take out a piece of paper and when you start your fundraising campaign or before you go out and say, I need to raise X amount of money for year end 2010, you write all these no's on a piece of paper. And the last little one is a yes. And so every time somebody says, geez, I'm sorry, can't contribute, you go in your, to yourself, excellent. And you go back and you check off, cross off a no, because you're one step closer to yes. And that is going to help you visually stay on track, psychologically stay psyched up to be able to ask for those funds. So that's one little tool.